Football is nearly back. You know, I can't wait to see Man United draw against Middlesbrough on Friday in the FA Cup. Look, I don't think they actually draw. I'll give you my prediction in the game. But welcome back to actual football. We don't have to talk about all the midfielders we didn't sign or how frustrated we are at the board. We can just talk about how crap we are on the pitch. Get back to normal and all that. This is going to be my predicted 11, my sort of thoughts ahead of the game against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. It's been a long time. It's been a couple of weeks. It's been. A, it's just been a... A long time of frustration, really, for United fans after what was quite a dismal transfer window, and that's being polite. But let's talk about the footy. Let's talk about what we can be positive about going forward. Because there's a lot of games coming up in February. The Champions League is here. There's some big games coming in March as well. Oh, mate, it's all going to start kicking off. We're getting towards not the business. I suppose it's the second half of the season and the business end of the season. So please make sure you stick around for the video, and I'll give you my predicted 11 for this game against Middlesbrough. Before I do start, please, would you consider, ladies and gents, subscribing to United People's TV, heading down there, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that notification bell, and you'll get a ping every time I go live with a video. What more could you want, apart from quite a few things? But look, let's get straight into it. And let's waste no time. First things first, formation-wise, I think we're going to stick with the 4-3-3. And I will. I do think there's going to be a couple of changes to our defence. I think we're going to see Dean Henderson in goal. wan Saka at right-back, short and left-back Lindelof and Varane as the two centre-backs. That's my prediction anyway. I might be completely and utterly wrong. Uh, spoiler alert, this is uh, videos going out before Ralph Radnick's press conference. And he might say that certain players are uh, not available. But as far as we know... These are all available. Uh, Tellers is played out with Brazil uh, for their World Cup qualifiers. I think he'll probably be rested for this game. Uh, wan is going to return from his illness. Would you still start Diogo Delo? You let me know what you think in the comments below, but I think this will be a game where Ralph sees it as an opportunity for um, wan Saka to sort of prove himself, to show that he can do it for Manchester United because Diogo Delo's improved performances at right back have given a new definition, not, not a new definition to that right back spot, but extra competition on that place. Now, Varane and Lindelof, maybe you're going to see Harry Maguire start here. Uh, Lindelof missed a couple of games, of course, after he was given some uh, leave by running after his house was broken into. I'd like to see Lindelof start here alongside Varane with a partnership that I thought was excellent. And I think probably could be our best partnership this season. Aaron Maguire's got to force his way back in. Maybe he'll start here. And Luke Shaw, again, like uh, Wan-Bissaka on the right, on the right back position, he's got a lot to prove. And it's the FA Cup. It's the opportunity, I think, for him to play a couple of the fringe players because he's got to try and keep this squad happy. It's a trimmer squad now. And then I think Dean Henderson will start in goal. Just my opinion anyway. That might be completely wrong, but that's exactly what I think will happen. But let's head over to the midfield. And before I do, just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. <laughs> Yes, people, just want to give a big shout out to OneFootball for supporting United People's TV, as they have done for a long, long time. If you don't know about OneFootball by now, first of all, where have you been? Second of all, there is a link in the description. Download the app. It's free to download on iOS and Android. It is a one-stop app. It's literally called OneFootball for a reason. You get all your Manchester United news, all the return of the football back in February, all the stats and build-up to the games, all the transfer news, all the talk about Ten Hag and Pochettino as that develops over the season. One Football is the place to get that. So as I said, support United People's TV by supporting One Football. Big shout out to them. Follow the link in the description to download that app. As I said, big up to One Football. And if you haven't already downloaded it, seriously, where have you been? But if you haven't, links in the description. Let's get back to the footy though. Seamless. Seamless. But yeah, thank you very much to One Football for sponsoring the video. Now, we need to, of course, midfield's always the conversation, isn't it? It's that proper. It's, it's like you wait in every predicted 11 video to, to see who's going to start in midfield. And this is who I've gone for, right? I've gone for McTominay. I've gone for Bruno. And of course, the main talking point, I've gone for Pogba. Now, Ralph may say that he's not going to be 100% fit to start. But as far as we've seen from training pitches, Pogba is available. And Pogba is the big, big question going forward between now and the rest of the season. I'll tell you what, I think I'm probably going to do a separate video just on Pogba being back in the team because there's a real conversation to be had here. Do you want to see Paul Pogba starting first and foremost? We all know he hasn't signed the contract. We all know he might slash probably will leave Manchester United. Do you want to see Paul Pogba starting against Borough, against anybody between now and the end of the season? I think the FA Cup is going to be an opportunity for Ralph to play Pogba, who he called exceptional after only one training session. So Ragnick's bigging him up. And whatever you think about the Paul Pogba situation, I see it as quite simple. I see Pogba using these four months to put himself in the shop window. 
And the only way he's going to do that is by playing excellent football. Like the football that we saw when Solskjaer took over as interim manager. You remember when Pogba was sensational then? I'll always remember that because I went to uh, Fulham away and Pogba was amazing in that game. Scored a banger with his left foot, I think, and set up Martial for another one. I think we're going to get that sort of Pogba because from a narcissistic, selfish point of view, he has to do it for himself. And that's where I think this it can help United. We could, you could, of course, play Fred there if you wanted to, but I think Fred's been playing uh, along with Tellers as well, actually, um, out in the World Cup qualifiers. He may not start the same games, but I just think he'll probably rest Fred for this game and sort of wait and bring him in for, for the midweek game. I think it's against Burnley, isn't it, before Southampton next weekend? Just strikes me as I think he might rest Fred. And of course, we need to see what this man can continue to do in that number six role. You might see Nemanja Matic there, all right? It's either Scott there or it's Matic. I would personally rather see McTominay play there. It may be against lesser opposition, but uh, what we've always seen from the last few years from Manchester United, eh? uh, when it comes to complacency against teams like that, we can massively take our foot off the gas. We can't do that. And that absolutely is why that bloke's got to play. Bruno Fernandes plays with a different tempo to everybody else. Uh, I don't really think he'll mind too much if he got shifted over to the right-hand side of midfield uh, when Pogba, because Pogba's better position would be on the left hand side of a midfield three. It's actually his best position. If you look at when he got four assists against Leeds, he got it from that role there. And hell, I don't like the Paul Popper situation as much as you do. I'm done with it. I would rather Man United just uh, moved him on and we say, look, the Popper situation, it didn't work out. But if Popper can help United between now and the end of the season, we can go further in the Champions League. We can get close towards that top four. Hell yeah, I want that for United, and I think Pogba could probably do that. So I would definitely play him against Borough to see how he gets on. So that'll be my midfield three. And going forward, of course, there's question marks about the attack. Will he start Ronaldo? Will he rest him for the FA Cup? What about Elanga? What about Sancho? Does he go back in? What about Rashford? This is the front three I've gone for. I've gone for no Sancho. No, sorry, no Sancho. No Rashford. Sancho on the right-hand side, Elanga on the left, and Ronaldo up front. I think if you're looking at most likely things I've got wrong here, you're probably looking at Elanga. You're probably looking at Rashford for Elanga. I think Jaden Sancho will start. I think that's a bit of a given. Sancho, of course, uh, like Lindelof, missed the last couple of games. He missed the uh, last couple of games for a family bereavement, uh, rightly given time off by uh, Ralph Radnick uh, from the human perspective. So well done for Ralph for doing that. And Sancho, hopefully he's come back from this international break and we can start seeing that Sancho that we all know is there, that we all know at some point will come out and we all know will become one of the best wingers in world football again whenever he's there. But we haven't seen that week on week at United for whatever reason. It's It's been a tough start for him in Manchester, but we've seen glimpses, uh, at least not that um, that goal he scored against Villarreal, crash it off the bar, and I think he scored against Chelsea as well soon after. But... Jaden Sancho, man, I hope he can use from February onwards and just we can have a different story for Sancho, different narrative in the second half of the season compared to the first half. Champions League knockouts are coming. Business end of the season is coming. Big games coming up in March. I'd love it if Sancho could shine. Like Kevin Keegan, I'd absolutely love it. And Ilanga, I'm going to keep him in that team because Ilanga was the brightest spark we had um, before the international break. Eh? It came at a bad time, that international break, after we beat Brentford uh, well, second half anyway, uh, and we beat West Ham at home. There was a little bit of momentum in the sales of, of United, and I hope that can continue here. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo, I think Cavani, again, like Fred, like Telles, has been playing out in South America, so I don't think he'll be fit to start here. I think potentially you could see Rashford start there and Ronaldo rested for the FA Cup game. That's just a bit of a guess. I'm not really sure. But I think he'll probably start Ronaldo, and maybe as the game progresses, depending on how United are doing against Borough, I think maybe he'll switch Ronaldo out after the 50th, 60th minute. Depends what we're doing. And then maybe bring Rashford on and play him through the middle. Because, of course, Martial's not there anymore. Who else are you going to play through there? I don't think you're really going to play anyone. We don't have that many choices. You've got Ronaldo and Cavani. And I don't think he'll play Cavani. I think Cavani will be rested just like Fred will be and just like Tedes would be. But that's what I'm going to go for for my start 11 there against Middlesbrough. It's a strong as hell team. You could make more changes there if you really, really wanted to. You could start Phil Jones in the heart of defence and try and get more... I'm in for him. You could start Maguire. I think Maguire may start. You could start Rashford. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But that would be my starting 11 with Bruno and Pogba in midfield. And I'll tell you what, if it happens, I'd be excited to see how it works. All right. With McTominay as a number six. Because on paper, right, 
you're probably looking at that as Man United's best midfield. Will it work though? That's a whole different ball game. But that's my prediction. That's my predicted eleven for the game against Middlesbrough. Ramnit might come out in his press conference very soon and say, look, certain players aren't playing, but if they are all available, that's who I'd choose. Who would you choose, though? You let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure you subscribe to United People TV, ladies and gents. Come on. Drop a like on the video, too. No one really seems to like videos. I don't really know why. Maybe they don't actually like me. <laughs>